What's up guys, my name is Clay Ratterman and in today's video, we're going to be going over how to conduct meetings internally within your company, specifically using Notion. So let's dive in here. Uh, first and foremost guys, I run um, a couple of different businesses, but mainly uh, a lot of my meetings, especially right now, the ones that I'm running are with a sales team. So this is gonna be specifically helpful if you guys are running meetings with sales teams, but it can be applicable to pretty much any meeting. So I wanna start off with that. But basically guys, I created this little Notion template, kind of an explainer document, and then also a template for you guys to use to actually take down um, and record a meeting notes and uh, meeting agendas. So I'm gonna share that with you guys at the end of the video. So stick around if you guys would like to get this template. So first and foremost, this book is called Meetings Suck. So a lot of the stuff um, that uh, the, the principles that I have outlined here are specifically from that book and a couple other books around meetings. So a lot of people don't like meetings, guys, and, and particularly why is because they feel like they could be a waste of time. And so I wanna give you guys uh, my company's general meeting rules so I can show you guys how to not waste time. You can make them effective and enjoyable with your team. And yeah, have a good process so you guys never have to worry about uh, meeting headaches ever again. So first and foremost, general meeting rules, always start the meeting on time and always end a few minutes early. That is easier said than done, I know, but it's very, very uh, respectful to the people that are uh, either running the meeting or are a part of the meeting. So both those things are super, super important. Uh, when you're on a meeting, you wanna share observations, not conclusions. So what I mean by that is sometimes uh, people get into like arguments or things on meetings because they're sharing um, in business or sharing things as if they're a conclusion. So they're coming to, they're jumping to conclusions, if you will, uh, rather than sharing it as an observation to be discussed openly. Um, so make sure you guys just keep that in the back of your mind. And then uh, another quick rule that we have is after a decision is made um, from a leadership or as a team, agreement is optional, but commitment to that decision is not. So people, one of our rules is everyone must commit to the decision and move forward, even if we do not necessarily agree on the final decision. There's obviously time for discussion and time to uh, kind of rally behind a certain decision. Next, stop whatever you are doing early and be ready for new meetings to start. So the key is to stop working on whatever you were working on beforehand a few minutes early so you can actually uh, make it to the next meetings on time. Um, if you're gonna use Zoom, we want cameras on, actively engaged and participating. Uh, everyone is encouraged to participate if they're on the meeting. Uh, one of my personal rules is you should not be on the meeting or in a meeting in real life unless you are either actively giving value or getting value. So you can opt out of meetings. Like if, if you're not gonna get value or give value on this meeting, you should not be on it, it's a waste of time. Um, next, come prepared with any pre-meeting assignments completed as well as having run through the agenda beforehand so you can understand if and when you can contribute or receive value. Um, next, limit side conversations and going off track by keeping note to have separate discussions offline. So this is something that happens all the time, uh, especially if you have people you enjoy working with. Next, we don't have meetings for the sake of having meetings. End them early if you're not being productive or things are not getting done. Uh, again, waste of time in meetings costs a lot of money. So meetings are to, to number one, communicate, and then number two, to make decisions on things and then get clear on the next action you need to, need to take. They're not to, to be sitting on and wasting a bunch of time. So I just wanted to give you guys my general meeting rules before I jump into this because I think those will be helpful to some people and um, again, that's stuff that I've learned from reading these books on meetings. So if you spend a lot of time on meetings, hopefully that helps. Next, guys, structure of a meeting agenda. This is important. This is part of the template. Purpose, so you just always want to have a reason why you're meeting. It could be very simple, a couple words. Um, agenda with a lot of times for each and the discussion styles listed out. This is a little bit in-depth. You know, if the meeting's not that important, I always still like to jot down a couple bullet points of what the agenda is but I'm not gonna go into as deep as like, what is the discussion style? What are the uh, tasks and things like that? So at the bare minimum, at least write down what the agenda is. So you have bullet points of what you're gonna speak on um, and what the purpose of the agenda is. Uh, in terms of discussion styles, this stuff's optional, but it is helpful. So there's info sharing, which is basically like you're telling the, uh, the people on the meeting, you're sharing information with them. There's planning or creative discussion where everyone's kind of chiming in and trying to, uh, plan things out or, or get creative. And then there's decision driving discussion, which is basically let's 
come and drive to a decision on this specific uh, point. So again, that's helpful, but uh, not always necessary. Having people do a little bit of pre-homework before your meeting, like come show up with you know these bullet points listed out, always very helpful. It keeps people really engaged. Outcomes to achieve for the meeting. Again, I don't usually do that one. That's That one's kind of optional as well. And then post-meeting recap and assignments, clarify with everyone so they know what they need to do before getting off. So have them say it in front of the group. If you guys assign tasks to people on these meetings, um, I think it's really important to, to get the verbal commitment back from them. Like, okay, you know, you understand, like this is your responsibility have this done by X, Y, and Z, and you guys can put it into whatever your task management system is. Cool, and then so different roles at the meetings. This is the last part before I'll show you guys the template. Different roles at the meetings. There's a moderator, so this is the person that's ahead of the meeting. Um, they may not be the one who called the meeting necessarily, but if, there's, if you're assigned as the moderator, uh, you should always have a moderator, so make somebody the person that has to wear the hat to say, you know, I'm the bad guy here. I, I cannot lose sight of where we're heading. I gotta keep everybody on track. I gotta make sure this meeting flows properly because if you don't have that usually if no one takes charge um, things are gonna you know kind of go all over the place next there's a parking lot uh, this is the person just responsible for documenting all the meeting notes so the, I can't stress how important this one is you don't have to call it parking lot but just have someone taking meeting notes um, because a lot of times this stuff gets lost and you talk about great stuff and nobody ends up doing anything with that or taking any action on it so just have somebody that's assigned to writing down notes for that meeting. You, you can rotate all these different roles at all times too. Timekeeper, this is just someone to make sure everybody's staying on time. Uh, a good rule of thumb is if an issue is gonna take two minutes or more to solve and it doesn't pertain to the entire group that's on that meeting, you should bump it to a side conversation for later on. So again, that's just a good rule so you don't waste time. And then yeah, participants, just make sure if you are participating in a meeting, you're actively engaged in either getting or receiving value. So there's some little things on like the different types of meetings here. I got, again, I got a lot of this stuff from that book. Um, we don't use all of it. One thing I will touch on is the RPI meetings. So if you guys do want to have a really nice uh, structure where you have like, let's say you have five, 10 team members, something like that. 10 is probably a lot. You typically on meetings don't want to have any more than a group of, yeah, between five to 10. But what I will say is RPI meetings, if you're trying to get quick feedback from your from your team on what they've been working on and what's been working and the issues they're having, RPI stands for results, progress, and issues. So we usually have people go around the room and they share the results. So a couple of bullet points about, okay, here's actually what got done or here's the results that I had over the past week. Here's the progress I've made in these areas. And then here are the issues that I'm having. It keeps people on track and uh, in line to basically have a really productive meeting. So if you ever have to do check-ins with people, I would suggest doing the RPI method. Um, and then lastly, here is pretty much the meeting notes calendar. So this is, again, the entire template. I'll give you guys all this, you know, these kind of bullet points so you can make a video like this that I'm currently creating and share it with your company here in Notion. But on top of that, guys, I would use this meeting notes calendar. So, you know, if I click right here and I wanted to add a new meeting for today, I could just click this meeting notes template. I would just title this Thursday meeting. Okay, there we go. So this template, first and foremost, we have the date. Uh, the only other thing here, you can include a file or you can include a link if you wanted to include like a, a, a cloud link to Zoom. We do all our meetings through Zoom. Um, so you could actually upload the Zoom file after you're done so you can record the meeting and drop it here. Or again, like I said, you could change this to be um, a link and you could just upload a, a cloud link, like a Google Drive link, or you could upload a directly to Zoom zoom one of their links to make sure you guys have the call recorded um, not every meeting needs recorded but things that are useful for trainings it's always good to have um, lastly yeah here's the template it's meeting agenda so it gives you the purpose tasks to complete for the meeting so before uh, it gives you the topics Again, these are optional, time allocated and discussion style. And then, yeah, lastly, I always include updates, questions, or addition requests to the meeting agenda. Um, this is really the most important part. We use Slack for all of our communications in my company. So a lot of the meeting agendas are posted there as well. But uh, making sure that people feel that they can add to the meeting is also super, super helpful. And then lastly, just having a spot for meeting notes for people to take down. Yeah, so this is the template. Hopefully this helps you guys. I like to do it in a calendar view so you can see all the meetings that you're having. You can refer back to them. You can check the meeting notes. You can see a call recording if needed. And at the end of the day, everyone in your company knows the expectations. They know exactly how to appear on these meetings. They know how to uh, approach them. 
and there's a good rule set and structure in place. So hopefully this video helps you guys. I'll include this specific meeting agenda template and training uh, for you guys to use it within your own companies. We will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. I'm gonna be dropping a lot more Notion content coming here soon that will help you guys in your personal life and in business. So stay tuned. See you guys next time. Peace.